China's high-speed rail is one of the country's most impressive achievements, but on one rainy night, tragedy would strike when two of these trains collided near Wenzhou, shocking the nation and raising serious questions about the safety of their ambitious rail system. In this episode, we'll dive into the story of the Wenzhou high-speed rail collision. The 23rd of July 2011, Wenzhou, Zhejiang, the People's Republic of China. A high-speed rail train is on its way from Hangzhou to Fuzhou, passing over a viaduct in Lucheng, Wenzhou. The heavy rain has been relentless this evening. Above them, a storm rages, with thunder and lightning permeating the evening sky. As the train rounds a bend, they are instructed by a signal to stop and apply the brakes, coming to a halt. China is by far the largest operator of high-speed rail in the entire world, with over 42,000 kilometres or 26,000 miles of track, and transporting over 2.5 billion passengers a year. High-speed rail, derived from Japanese bullet trains, has revolutionised rail travel in countries with the means to adopt it. They can travel twice the speed of a conventional train and are more competitively priced and induce less hassle than air travel, but at a cost of being less profitable, often needing to be subsidised by government, and are notorious for maintenance. Backups and redundancies are crucial for their smooth function. In 2011, the most commonly used high-speed train models in China include the CRH-1, built in a collaboration with Canada and Germany, based on their Bombardier Regina, and the CRH-2, a license-built version of the Japanese E2 series Shinkansen. The train, a CRH-1 and its 1,072 passengers, wait patiently for the go-ahead to proceed on their journey. Approaching is a CRH-2, oblivious to the fact another train is sat motionless directly ahead. On the CRH-2, the moment of realisation comes too late. They collide with the rear of the CRH-1 at 62 miles per hour. The impact sends four carriages careening off the viaduct, plummeting 20 metres to the ground below. For those trapped inside the wreckage, chaos and confusion sets in. Cries for help fill the otherwise silent night air, mixing with the wail of sirens as rescue teams scramble to the scene. Passengers cling to hope as emergency workers pull them from the wreckage one by one. At the end of the 21-hour rescue effort, it is found that 40 have been lost and 192 more are left injured. But on a 21st century railway, with numerous safety measures in place to prevent this very occurrence, how do two trains simply collide with one another? Initially, it is reported that a lightning strike on the first train caused it to stall on the track, but this should not cause a second to rear-end it. The second train, in theory, should have stopped before it was anywhere close to hitting the stationary train. Soon after, the real cause is found. It was not the train itself which was disabled by lightning, but instead a signal assembly had been struck, burning out its fuses, causing an incorrect indication. This also led the control centre to believe the track was unoccupied, and the next train was allowed to continue. By the time its driver was able to physically see the other train, it was too late. In addition to the lightning strike, other systemic issues surfaced. Engineers failed to respond quickly enough to the system failure, the railway's safety protocols were inadequate, also poor management and rushed construction of the network contributed to systemic vulnerabilities. The investigation finds that railway officials had ignored earlier warnings about the reliability of the signalling systems. In the days that follow, outrage sweeps across China, with footage surfacing online of officials burying parts of the wreckage site with bulldozers, with the deceased still inside. The government's excuse is that they had to do so to allow quicker access for rescuers, but this claim is argued against by witnesses. The Chinese government tried to minimise the severity of the accident and dodge blame for it, telling the news media to focus less on the accident itself and more so on humanitarian stories such as the efforts of the rescuers, not to report too frequently and not to link the story to high-speed rail development.
also instructing them not to question or elaborate further on the accident. In their coverage, media were directed to promote the theme of, in the face of great tragedy, there's great love. But even in a country with such a stranglehold over its media as China, reports were still scathing of the government's involvement. The story was too big and the human loss too great even for the Chinese Communist Party to cover up. In the wake of the disaster, the Chinese investigation cites the cause as being down to a number of inadequacies in the railway signalling system, including a lack of redundancies, lax equipment inspection, and failure to adequately respond to equipment malfunction caused by lightning. Major reforms are introduced, including the overhaul of safety protocol and policy more rigorous testing of railway systems, and high-speed expansion being temporarily slowed to ensure safety improvements. The collision led to widespread public outrage and calls for greater transparency in China's high-speed rail development. Today, its high-speed rail network is much safer and remains the largest and one of the most advanced in the world. But the Wenzhou accident serves as a sobering reminder that even the most advanced technology can easily fail when safety is not the top priority. The Wenzhou collision was China's worst high-speed train disaster, and the third most deadly in the entire world. It exposed serious flaws, but also led to necessary changes in railway safety, as the country continues to push the boundaries of transportation. If you enjoyed this mini documentary and found it interesting or entertaining, then make sure to give it a thumbs up rating for the time and effort it took me to make it. If you want to watch my video covering the number one deadliest high speed rail train crash, then I'll have that on screen for you here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.